if you're using loppers like this to clear up a bunch of old brush, it's going to be a lot of exhausting work and a very long day. Using a brush blade on a trimmer is a lot better option, but not all brush blades are the same. We got a bunch of different brands to test today, so let's get the testing underway. In the first test, we'll compare the blades on grass as well as small trees. In the second test, we'll see how the blades hold up after they come in contact with steel pipe and a concrete block. Then we'll test the damaged blades on small trees to see which blade performs the best. At a price of $22 for two blades or $11 each, the least expensive blade that we'll be testing is made by Kurtzall. 36 carbide teeth, nine inch blade, made of high strength carbon steel and durable carbide tips. Perfect for cutting bamboo, shrubs, and saplings. The Kurtzall brand is made in China. The Kurtzall blade weighs 329 grams. I definitely don't recommend using any type of blade on a curved shaft trimmer. A 30cc and larger straight shaft trimmer with bike handle grips is the way to go. Before we test the blades on small trees, let's first test the blades on grass. Regular trimmer cord will serve as our baseline. When sweeping side to side, the trimmer cord is doing a terrific job of both cutting the grass as well as discharging the grass clippings. Now let's see how the blades perform on the tall grass beginning with the Kurtzall blade. While it did a great job cutting the grass, the grass gathered on top of the blade instead of discharging the grass clippings. Since the blade of my trimmer spins counterclockwise, I'll approach the brush from the right side to avoid kickback. Let's see how the blade performs on a one inch tree. The Kurtzall blade cuts through the one inch tree like a hot knife through butter. The Kurtzall blade lost most of its speed cutting through the two inch tree, but it took less than a second to make the cut. While a three and a half inch tree is getting into chainsaw territory, let's see how the blades perform. And the Kurtzall blade cut through the three and a half inch tree in only 1.51 seconds. Very impressive. At a price of $16, the second least expensive blade we'll be testing is this Renegade Hybrid. 9 inch blade, 56 carbide teeth, last up to 10 times longer than plain steel blades. The Renegade Hybrid is made in China. The Renegade Hybrid weighs 323 grams. Just like the Kurtzall blade, the Renegade Hybrid easily cut through the grass, but the grass clippings gathered on top of the blade. The Renegade did a much better job cutting through the one inch tree and the blade didn't seem to lose any speed. The Renegade cut through the two inch tree in less than a second, but the blade lost most of its speed. The three and a half inch tree really put the Renegade hybrid to the test. 7.3 seconds or just about six seconds longer than the Kurtzall blade. I'll be testing two different Forester blades. The first one cost $18 and has 50 teeth. Just like the Kurtzall and the Renegade, the Forester is a nine inch blade. The Forester is made in China. At 469 grams, the Forester is around 140 grams heavier than the Kurtzall and the Renegade. Just like the Kurtzall and the Renegade hybrid, grass gathered on top of the Forester blade instead of discharging the grass clippings. The carbide teeth as well as the blade on the Forester is a lot thicker than the Renegade Hybrid as well as the Kurtzall. It made very easy work of the one inch tree. The extra 140 grams of weight helped the Forester maintain its momentum as it cut through the two inch tree in under a second. The Forester didn't lose nearly as much blade speed compared to the Kurtzall and the Renegade. The Forester is a lot thicker than the Kurtzall and the Renegade blades. And the Forester cut through the three and a half inch tree in only 2.88 seconds or just over a second longer than the Kurtzall blade. Also the price of $40 is this ATIE brand. Now this blade is a general purpose wood cutting circular saw blade, but we're going to use it anyway after we drill out the arbor. High quality tungsten carbide tip provide the best in precision, durability and performance. Anti kickback vibration design. Thin curve for fast smooth cutting. The general purpose ATIE blade is the heaviest yet at 485 grams. It'll be very interesting to see if this blade will last just as long if not longer than the blades designed for brush cutting. There's no information available on where this blade is made. To drill out the arbor, I've coupled a 5 8 and a 1 inch hole saw. The 5 8 hole saw will help keep the hole centered. Just like the brush blades, the circular saw blades experience the same problem with grass clippings gathering on top of the blade instead of discharging the clippings. The saw blade made very quick work of the one inch tree and the blade didn't seem to lose too much speed during the cut. And a general purpose saw blade mowed right through the two inch tree in less than a second. The heavy weight of the blade also helped it maintain its momentum throughout the cut. And the saw blade just blasted through the three and a half inch tree in only 1.61 seconds to move into second place behind the Kurt saw blade. At a price of $19 is this AR Pro 8 inch rotary weed brush kit. Lasts 10 times longer than regular trimmer blades. It's basically indestructible. It also includes an adapter kit. The AR Pro weighs more than twice as much as any of the other blades at 947 grams. That's a lot of weight to add to the end of a trimmer and it's definitely gonna cause more user fatigue compared to the lighter blades. 
The AR Pro is definitely shredding the grass. Definitely not designed to leave a smooth cut like the trimmer line or the brush blades. The AR Pro is definitely not designed for cutting through small trees either. It took nearly 20 seconds to grind through the one inch tree. The AR Pro needed 45 seconds to grind through the two inch tree. Definitely not a good choice for small trees. So I'm not gonna attempt a three and a half inch tree. At a price of $24 is this Oregon brand 22 tooth eight inch brush cutter blade. The Oregon brand is made in Sweden. The Oregon has 24 teeth. Unlike the other brands that use carbide, the Oregon has metal teeth. The Oregon weighs 335 grams. Due to the tooth geometry, the Oregon performed the best of all the blades at dispersing the grass clippings, but it still didn't perform nearly as well as the trimmer line. The Oregon didn't cut as smoothly as the carbide blades, but made very quick work of the one inch tree. The Oregon just ripped through the two inch sapling in under a second. And the Oregon needed 4.05 seconds to cut through the three and a half inch tree. So the Kurtzall brand holds on to the lead. At a price of $34 is this Forrester Chainsaw Carbide Blade. Nine inch and 20 teeth. Ideal for all brush cutting applications. Warning, blade is for cutting grass. Cutting harder objects could damage trimmer or rebound out of control, resulting in property damage, serious injury, or death. Since it is marketed as a brush cutting blade, we're gonna use it for cutting brush anyway. The Forrester is made in China. The Forrester Carbide is pretty heavy at 542 grams. The large chainsaw cutters help it perform slightly better at dispersing the grass clippings compared to the blades with carbide teeth. The chainsaw teeth on the Forester slung wood chips everywhere as it ripped through the one-inch sapling in a fraction of a second. The 542 grams of weight really helped the Forester blade maintain its momentum on the two-inch sapling as the thick cutter shredded the tree. The blade did lose more blade speed making the cut compared to most of the other brands. The Forester made the third fastest cut yet at 2.42 seconds on a three and a half inch tree. It takes a lot of power to keep those thick cutters moving as it carves a much wider path compared to the blades with the carbide teeth. And the most expensive blade we'll be testing at $50 is made by steel. The nice thing about the steel is that once you've used up one side of the blade, you could always flip it over and have a nice sharp edge. The steel blade is 9.8 inches, made in Germany. The steel weighs 339 grams. The 3 2 still is definitely dispersing the grass clippings better than the round blades. Compared to the 3 tooth blades that I've tested in the past, the steel is by far the sharpest blade and seems to be made of a much harder steel. It made very quick and easy work of the 1 inch tree. The 3 tooth blade seems well designed for a 1 inch sapling, but it didn't perform nearly as well on the 2 inch sapling. The blade needed over 11 seconds to chip its way through the 2 inch tree. After 30 seconds of chipping way on the 3 half inch tree, I ended the test. The amount of weight hanging off the end of a trimmer line can cause a lot of user fatigue. The Renegade Hybrid is the lightest at 323 grams, but the Kurtzall, Oregon, and Steel are less than 20 grams heavier. The Forrester Chainsaw is pretty heavy at 542 grams, and the AR Pro is about three times as heavy as the lightest blades at 947 grams. The most affordable blade, the Kurtzall brand, is the fastest at 1.51 seconds, but the ATIE General Purpose Blade is a close second at 1.61. Forrester 2.47, Forrester 50 Tooth Brush Blade 2.8 in Oregon 4.05 seconds. When clearing brush, incidental contact with metal and rocks can quickly damage a blade. Up next, let's see which of these blades can hold up the best when they come into contact with a two inch metal pipe. Let's test the Kurtzall blade first. And the Kurtzall blade wobbled quite a bit as it bounced off the steel pipe. Okay, the Kurtzall actually cut through the steel pipe. The new Kurtzall blade is on the left and the Renegade hybrid is on the right. The Kurtzall uses a far less aggressive tooth geometry as the cutters are angled back, making them less likely to get hooked. This really helped the Kurtzall survive without any missing or badly damaged carbide teeth. However, most of the teeth did experience some very minor chipping. The Renegade Hybrid cut halfway through the steel pipe. Now that's a lot of damage. The Renegade Hybrid has a very aggressive tooth geometry. While it did cut halfway through the steel pipe, it also lost five teeth and had quite a few others that experienced quite a bit of damage. The Forester left quite a mark, but it did not go all the way through the pipe. The Forester held up really well with only one missing tooth and minor chipping to many of the other teeth. The ATIE General Purpose Blade actually did more damage than the Renegade Hybrid and made about two thirds of the way through the steel pipe. The ATIE General Purpose Blade has a very aggressive tooth geometry. While it did cut more than halfway through the metal pipe, it experienced the most damage of all the blades yet with 13 missing or badly broken carbide teeth. 
The organ actually took a pretty big bite out of this pipe. All of the teeth on the organ experienced some damage. The leading edge on the teeth experienced significant rounding and doling. The Forster carbide is a real tank. It just sort of bounced off the pipe. Three of the teeth on the Forster completely sheared off while five others experienced significant damage. The steel did quite a bit of damage to the pipe. I was expecting a lot more damage to the steel blade, but it held up really well with only minor damage to the sharpened edge of the blade. It's definitely made of a very high quality steel. There's always a good chance that a brush blade will experience incidental contact with rock or concrete. So let's see how much damage they experienced from coming into contact with the concrete block beginning with the Kurtzall brand. The Kurtzall blade held up really well. The concrete did cause additional wear to many of the carbide teeth. The Renegade experienced chipping to several more teeth, but not nearly as much damage compared to the metal pipe. The Forester held up really well and only experienced minor damage to the carbide teeth from contacting the cinder block. The ATIE blade experienced a few more chipped carbide teeth, but not nearly as much damage compared to striking the steel pipe. The concrete block definitely caused more visible wear to the cutters on the organ blade. Other than some visible wear to the cutters, the Forester held up really well from making contact with the concrete block. The steel is a real tank and only experienced very minor wear to the sharpness of the blade edge. Now that all the brush blades experienced some damage from hitting metal and concrete, let's test them once again on the same 3.5 inch tree. The Kurtzall blade cut through the 3.5 inch tree in 1.51 seconds before experiencing damage. After the damage, it took right at 12 seconds to cut through the same tree. When the Renegade Hybrid was new, it cut through the 3.5 inch tree in 7.3 seconds. The damage really took a lot out of it as it took over 3 times as long, making the cut in nearly 23 seconds. The Forester originally only needed 3 seconds to make the cut, so the Forester moves into second place behind the Kurtzall brand. The general purpose saw blade started out the showdown as the second fastest, cutting through the tree in only 1.61 seconds. The damaged blade really struggled to make the cut, taking 21.86 seconds. The organ blade started out as the third fastest blade at 2.42 seconds. The damage caused by striking the metal and concrete slowed the organ more than any of the other brands, 34 seconds. Even though the Forester chainsaw teeth experienced quite a bit of damage to nearly half of the teeth, it still came out on top with the fastest time yet of 7.3 seconds. Very impressive. So the Forester came in on top at 7.3 seconds, Kurtzall 12, Forester 52 14, ATIE general purpose 21.86 seconds. So which blade won the showdown? In my opinion, the Kurtzall blade definitely won the showdown when you consider the value price of just about $12 and it performed extremely well, especially in the first event when the blade was new. I also like the Forester 50 tooth blade. It also performed extremely well and it held up fairly well once it came into contact with both rock as well as the metal. If you need a blade for the zombie apocalypse, definitely the Forester Carbide Chainsaw Blade. And finally, I really like the steel blade. It's a great blade if you're dealing with smaller brush as well as grass. All the videos in this channel, including this one, are viewer suggested. So if you have a video idea, I hope you'll take time to leave a comment. Thanks so much for watching. Please take care and I look forward to next time.